Hello everybody, this is A.L. Thick Madame. I hope that y'all are having a wonderful weekend and that everything is going well with you and yours. Everybody's fine in my neck of the woods. You know, I'm just relaxing on a Sunday, trying to enjoy my last day off before I have to hit that clock again. So anyway, I know that I'm late, y'all. The most been going on, but... Here is my little recap on Pose. So this episode started out with them at the ballroom scene like it often does start out. And Pray Tell is doing his, you know, MC thing, his announcer thing. You know, he is the one and only. Anyway, he is basically like, look... We know what's been going on over the past few weeks. Madonna has been charting the top, you know, the top of the charts. And everybody sees us now because of her song where she is talking about voguing. And, you know, it's a lot of the stuff that has been seen in the ballroom scene. So people are here for it. And so he was like, you know, what we're going to do today is we're going to do, you know, another little spin on it. And it's something about lofting. And he wanted, um, <laughs> he wanted, I'm not going to say what certain words that are considered to be derogatory that he was talking about. But anyway, he wanted um, some guys to come up there in vogue. But they were like, I guess they were like dressed like straight men so to speak, and, you know, not really clockable. I think that's the the best way I can describe it. But they had few people that wanted to volunteer. Y'all, one of the people who volunteered was one of the guys who house hops. And it was funny because <laughs> Praytail ended up reading him. He was like, oh, this is this person from the house of this. No, the house of this. No, uh, is it the house of Wintour? Like, that's the boy, one of the boys who ended up house hopping. I was dying laughing when Pray Tell said it. But that really was what it was, y'all. So I was like, stop. So anyway, y'all, this one guy came up there and killed it. And so Pray Tell was like, look, we don't even need the cardboard. We already know what his score is going to be. So he was like, you know, if there's anybody else who is big and bad enough to come up after him, feel free. But I don't think nobody is bold enough to do such a thing. Going once, going twice. And he was about to close it out and be like the next court category is. And Candy slowly pranced through the crowd like um, I'm next, <laughs> basically, attitude. And came up there. And took off a little blazer, and she had on like this Madonna. You y'all know Madonna is known for the look, the little cones and things, uh, the little cone bras and all that stuff. Like don't nobody have time, but yeah, she came out there, and I was like, Candy. Like every like every week, her and Pray Tell get into it, and I was like, Candy girl, why is you doing this? You look a fool. It ended up being like, look, stop, stop, stop. Cut the music off of everything. Pray tell read her down. And then it got to a point where they were going back and forth. And then she eventually was like, Pray, why are you always going in on me? Why are you always reading me? And all this other stuff. And then, you know, she was like, you need to give me a chance. I'm being myself and all this other stuff. You always preaching about how you need to be yourself and all this other stuff. But when I'm in here, you treat me basically the way that the people out there treat me and I should be able to be treated in a decent way too. You don't even give me a fair chance. So pray tell ain't want to hear all that. He was like, look, we'll just let everything out. we we'll just let the numbers speak for themselves. So he ended up letting the other people do what they do, which is they judge everything and they give the numbers and her numbers were really low. And he was like, look, I don't even need to say nothing else. The numbers speak for themselves. Y'all, it was a lie. I was dying because Candy cannot, like, if it ain't got nothing to do with how she looks as far as her face is concerned, she going to get red. Pray tell going to be looking like, why is this helpful up here? And it's a lot. So, yeah, y'all, it was a lot. You know, at the end of whatever she was talking about trying to get her point across, she was like, I am somebody and of course pray tell read her for that was like all right go ahead little uh jesse jackson because y'all know that was his little speech when he was trying to 
you know, come out. And that was around that time when he was trying to run for president or whatever it was he was doing at the time. But yeah, that was a little funny part too. So Blanca, Pray Tell, and Nurse Judy end up meeting up. And they, at this particular time, they met up at um, Nurse Judy's job and on, on her break. She has like a 20 minute break. And so she was like, look, we meet here today because I ain't got time and I only get a 20 minute break. So it was like, oh, we here because of you. And so she was like, yeah. So anyway, Pray Tell thinks that they're there to discuss some sort of event because y'all know he lives for a good event, but that's not why they were there. And so they had to let him know that that wasn't why they were there. They were basically there to try to have an intervention and get him to get on that medication because his numbers are drastically dropping. And apparently the medication that Blanca got on, her numbers have risen and like risen by a lot. So yeah, they keep telling him you need to get on it and you know, they're worried about him. Like they really are genuine friends of his. Pray tell was not here for that at all. He done went all the way off. And he was like, I have some way, some place to be. And eventually he left. So I was like, oh Lord, pray tell. You have to, like he, re you could tell how angry he was because he was like, I know this ain't an intervention. And that's what it was. Y'all. So anyway, the place he did have to go, he really did have to go somewhere. And he ended up meeting up with the other people who are judges at the balls and they were meeting up at some place where they were going to eat and they were discussing new categories they were like look we need to get some new categories so you know what we definitely not going to do is add the category of lip syncing i've heard people want to do that and you know everybody knows that candy live for stuff like that and so he was like yeah we definitely not going to do that tell me why candy was like a couple of seats up from them with her back facing them and then she rolls up out of the chair and says something. I was like, girl, why? So apparently she heard that that's where they were going to be at. And she was like, ain't no secret that this is where y'all be meeting at or whatever. And I knew that y'all had to come up with some new categories and I wanted to be in on it. And she really did try to push for it. And Pray Tell was like, nah, what we're not going to do is that. Y'all got to a point where Candy rolled all the way up on him, snatched him up, put a knife to his throat. Granted, it was like a butter knife or something like that, but she still did it. Y'all know that she she kind of nice with a knife. Y'all remember when she rolled up on Electra and was trying to cut her like it was a lot going on. She ain't scared to cut you. So, y'all, it was just bad. I was like, oh my gosh, girl, no. So, she was just like, look. I was just like, girl, stop. Like, she eventually let up. And when she walked off, Pray Tell said she must be a Scorpio. I hollered because all of my interactions with Scorpios have been terrible. Most of them are trash. I said what I said. I'm sorry if I, I uh, end up losing a few of y'all as subscribers, but I'm just saying. I didn't say you were trash. I'm just saying a lot of the people that share the same sign as you are trash for some unknown reason. That's just it. <laughs> y'all, but anyway, um, they ended up doing a category at the, at, um, at um their um a ballroom situation called uh higher than heaven and that was really cool i like that um he wanted people to be innovative and um innovative experimentation he wants you to look like trash they had somebody that came up in there that looked like she had on like um if I had to think of somebody offhand, it seems like something that Erica Badu or Andre 3000 would wear back in the day, like when he did that song. I hope that you're the one. If not, you are the prototype. And when Erica Badu did that one song, which is that, oh, oh, hey, I'm trying to decide. When she was in that video, kind of like, uh, alien type of feel kind of like that it was okay and then this one woman came in there and she had like cages on her head and a bigger cage that was created to mimic a skirt and all this other stuff like it was cool it was it was a pretty cool category i thought it was nice so anyway y'all lulu done rolled up and she is crying down and she is in her feelings because she hasn't heard from candy she don't know what's going on and so Blanca was like, okay, well, what, I mean, I don't understand why you and your feelings like this. So apparently, um, she has taken up 
a side hustle, a main hustle, which is prostitution. You know, being a lady of the night. And y'all know how outspoken Candy is. Candy is the type of person that she was like, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. And since she is co-mother of the house that she and Lulu, you know, are the mothers of, they are the ones who fit the bill. So, a lot they 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 apparently have been like short on funds to the point of where she ended up picking up that job and cuz she already strips y'all know she's already um a stripper i don't know what else she does but they made a point to show us that she's a stripper and it just got to a point where since Lulu knew that there was no way that she could change her mind she was like okay so whenever you're done doing what you're doing you need to call me Basically, so that she has a reassurance that she's okay. She hasn't called her in two days. She hadn't seen her in two days. She feels though something really bad didn't happen. And so Blanca was like, well, did you go down there and see, you know, if she's there at the hotel? Because it's one specific hotel that she goes to when she's doing these jobs. And so she was like, no. And then she was like, well, if I go down there, I don't want to go alone. I want you to come with me. They ended up going to the hotel. They were talking to the hotel manager and... He was just like, do you know how many people come in and out of here a day? They ended up having her picture, of course, showed the picture of what she looked like. And he was like, I don't know. I don't know about all that. And so they were like, look, she normally goes to room number 44. Do you know if she's in that room right now? They, and Blanca actually looked over and she saw the key was missing. This is one of those old style ones with a key just hanging up. And when they give you the room, they, I, he probably wrote down whoever whatever little um uh fake name was given and all this other stuff as far as information is concerned when you know delving out the keys and they saw that the keys were missing and they were like look this is what she looked like she says that she normally gets room number 44 when she's there because it has it's the only one that has a vanity in it and so he was like look i don't know if they're there but and so blanca was like well look so you could tell that he was being like, I don't care. I'm dismissive. I just don't care about the situation. It ain't that deep. I just want this money and leave me alone because you're interrupting me doing nothing. And so Blanca was like, look, if you hear anything, let me know. Call me. So she left her information with him at the front desk and then they left. So I was like, Lord, this is too much. Y'all, it then got so serious that Blanca and them have gone through the trouble of making missing flyers for her so while they're doing that and it's to the point where they were like well are we having family dinner she was like no nah, all hands on that we ain't having no family dinner do whatever you're gonna do but we got to get all these flyers up we don't know what's going on we got to get the word out we have to try to locate her before the end of the night because like i said it's been two days so tell me why poppy ended up answering the phone and so the phone ends up being for blanca and so they end up going to another scene but yeah y'all it was a lot um Come to find out, she had been killed. Um, apparently, after they came down there and all that stuff, he began to get suspicious, I guess, because the room had been, you know, rented out. And it's one of those by the hour type of places. And nobody ever came out. So they ended up sending housekeeping keeping up there. And the housekeeper went in there. And she saw like a bloody rag or something. And then she ended up opening a bathroom door or a closet door. And Candy was just laid out on the floor, blood on her face. So I was like, Lord have mercy. So since we now know that she is indeed deceased, people are trying to act fast because you know Candy is a transsexual woman. That's the first problem. The second problem is her parents aren't really on board with her like that as far as that situation goes like most of these people are whether they find their child is just gay or especially if they become trans in any way so they're trying to set up funeral arrangements they have to they're devising a plan to get her body so they're trying to figure out what they're going to do they ended up going uh judy knows this gay guy and he works in something where it's hand in hand where he would be able to work with the mortuary or the hospital or wherever the body would be released from. So he was like, I can't do that. I can't give you no information. I can't just release the body to you. I, It's going to all come back to me, all this other stuff, y'all. 
So Judy was like, look, do whatever you got to do. I'll take the fall for it. Like, this is not cool. Now, what if the situation happened with you? With your, with, with your situation? You are a gay man. And what if you end up married, happily married for 30 years, and then you pass away or they pass away, and then they tell you that they can't get your body for your loved one or, or you know, vice versa. And so he got in his feelings about it. He was like, Write down the name of the place where we're going to send the body to. And, you know, I put the paperwork through as fast as I can, see what I could do. So they went up doing that. I was like, Lord, um, it's just, apparently it's so hard on Lulu that she didn't even show up for this process either. So Electra is there, even though she wasn't very vocal this episode, which I think that was a smart idea. Because y'all know she can kind of take over. So she did really good. She she didn't talk that much this episode. Um, but yeah, Lulu, she couldn't take it. She's taking it really, really hard. So she didn't show up for that. Y'all, the funeral home director set it all the way off. So he, he ended up taking the body. And he was talking to Blanca. He was like, I embalmed her for free. You know, she used to come down here very, very often for other people's funerals. She made a point to learn what my name was and, you know, greet me. She was very nice. She was very caring and she really cared about all the people who were coming down here and she would, you know, she was just so pleasant and she was just like, this is just a shame that all this stuff is happening and it was just so crazy and I don't think anybody knew that she was doing this. So he ended up embalming her for free. They didn't have no issues with all of that. The problem came in when they went to go and view her body. Y'all know they have whoever doing the makeup down there. And she wasn't going to be looking how she looked normally. So she was looking like a mess by the makeup and the hair. And it just got to a point where Angel was like, we need, we got two hours. So we all need to dump our purses and do what we can do. So they dumped their purses out and it started like, Wiping the makeup that she had on her off. And then they redid the makeup. And whatever they did, it looked nice. That whoever did her eyebrow, her eyelashes, it was, I mean, her eyelashes, her um, eyeshadow, it was gorgeous. Like, everything they did, it complimented her skin tone, everything. She looked really nice. So, I was like, okay, then. Um, Y'all, <sighs> so everybody arrived from the ballroom scene, people who knew her. Angel's task was to get in contact with the parents and they were not having it. They weren't going to show up or so we thought they ended up showing up later, but that I'll get to that in a little while. So anyway, y'all, of course, they ended up having pray tell doing the eulogy and he was just like the master of ceremony over the whole funeral, the whole fume y'all. And he got up there y'all pray tell was in his feelings heavy and I think that it has a lot to do with, even in real life, you'll have your beef with people. But if you aren't evil and you don't have a hard and cold heart, you will feel something about the situation. And he was deep in his feelings. Like, he cried a whole lot. Y'all, so, you know, I'm glad. My thing is this. This is what I appreciate. And this is what I wish people would do at funerals in real life. He got up there. He was in his feelings. But he was like, y'all... Y'all knew what our situation was. You knew we didn't get along. And like everybody, you know, started laughing and it broke the ice a little bit. And he was like, you know, it was a tragedy what happened to her. And, you know, I would read her and she would read me. We would always go back and forth. But that's just like how it is with a sibling rivalry anyway. Family ain't going to always get along. But when it matters, we all come together. So he did what he did. Y'all, then he eventually did a, like a moment of silence or whatever and went and sat down. Y'all, he having his moment to himself and Candy comes to him and is talking to him and they had a one-on-one -on -one and she was just like, why you always come for me like this? Like, you don't never give me a chance and all this other stuff. I don't understand. What did you have against me? So they had their moment. I was like, yay. And, you know, initially, like, like literally when she first appeared, she was like, I forgive you. And he looked around like, I'm no good with Because everybody else, they, you know, their eyes are closed and heads are bowed. And so he looking around like, that sounds like candy. And she was like, I, you heard right. I forgive you. And, you know, she's literally being herself. I was like, oh, my gosh, y'all is so cool. But they talked for a good little while. And, you know, 
she was like, you know, why did you have such a problem with me? And he was like, you know, I don't know. I guess it was because I didn't want to look at you. I, I didn't want to look at you. I didn't really want to recognize you because you represent everything that I have to fight against out in the world. And you face it head on. And, you know, it was just a lot. She was everything that he always wanted to hide from in the world when he goes out. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. Y'all, he was really deep in his feelings. Y'all, Blanca had to break him out of his little moment when he was having with, with Candy and be like, get on with it. So he went back up there and all that, right? So he can go ahead and continue to, you know, be over the, the, uh, the uh, funeral. So Angel went up there and she was, you know, saying her goodbyes to her and y'all she just couldn't take it no more she like she was up there like why are you in here i don't understand why you in here it should be me it shouldn't even be you because she was out there doing that like y'all she was at the piers doing all this same stuff that would get you killed in a heartbeat and she was lucky enough to not end up like that and you know as of right now she has been doing well with that wet and wild contract she's the face of it during that particular year and all that. So, y'all, Candy came to her and was like, you know, you, I, I know what you've done. Don't do that again. And, you know, she was like, I don't know what, what, I, what I can do. It's supposed to be me and all this. And she was like, I know you got that in your back pocket as far as, you know, her trying to go back out there. Like, if she feels like, if she feels like the modeling and all that stuff ain't going to, you know, go through and go the way she feels like it should, then she's going to get right back out there into that dangerous territory and possibly end up in a casket as well. So she's telling her, don't do that or whatever. Y'all, she got in her feelings and she ran out. So in the forehead, Lulu is sitting there. Nobody's thinking Lulu was going to show up. She ended up um, being there. But before I go into that... um. She told Angel, you need to take my death as a lesson. Look at my death as a lesson, as a um, cautionary tale, if you will. So I was like, yes, girl, tell her that in death. Y'all, she was talking to her. So anyway, she ran out and Lulu, you know, she really was about to, she was almost at the door. And then Lulu was like, Angel. And so she was like, oh, we didn't think you were going to show up. And she was like, I can't go in there and see her like that. I can't go in there. Like, she really is messed up over it. So she was like, you need to go in there. And, you know, um, she actually persuaded her to go in there. Y'all, she went in there. Everybody's shocked to see her actually show up. And, y'all, this heifer is at the casket. At first, she was, you know, still in her feelings like she had been. And then all of a sudden, she was like talking to us and she was like, this heifer stole my brooch. She done snatched the brooch off of her. She done snatched the gloves off of her hands. Nobody knew what was going on until she snatched the gloves off. They was like, did she take the gloves off? Then she proceeded to try to pry the wig off of her head. I was like, you know what? I am all the way done with you, girl. I cannot. Like, I can't. Y'all, she ended up leaving out, storming out, and went and sat outside of the place and started smoking. So Candy came to her, and she was reading her, and, oh, Lord, I was like, Lord, this is too much. Um, And so, you know, you know, they had the little moment. She was like, girl, you know, we always, you know, we always had our moments, but, you know, we always came together. And she was like, you ain't got to worry about me. You can let me go. You ain't got to worry about me. One day... You gonna they're gonna be it's gonna get to a time where you're gonna wish I was around. You're gonna think about something, laugh about something, and then you're gonna think about me, you're gonna look to your left or your right, and you ain't gonna see me there and wish I was there. So anyway, she had her moment and she got in her feelings. Y'all, so they went back on the inside and they had Blanca in there humming, um, yes, Jesus loves me. And they had that the moment that she had with Candy was both of them humming that song together, and they they were harmonizing with the humming. I was like, Y'all better harmonize. Y'all better harmonize. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, but um, Electra ended up coming to be like, girl, you need to get in there. There are these two old people that look like, I don't forgot what she said, in there partaking of our refreshments. And so she was like, what you want me to do about it? She was like, go and get them to get away from there. So I went in there, y'all, of course, it's Candy's parents. 
so she asked who they were and you know they were like um uh they basically said who they were but not really <laughs> but yeah y'all y'all and as soon as Blanca said candy she was like candy what kind of name is candy and so she was like that was the name that she chose for herself and you could tell that her father was here for for candy you know what i'm saying even though he didn't know the extent of how everything was you could tell that he was the supportive parent and the mama was the one who was very very the type of person that probably had her to run away and i want to deal with them anyway y'all so blanca was like well Everybody who loved her came out and supported her. So if you want to, I'm inviting you to come to the back and say goodbye. So they ended up coming in, everybody looking, trying to figure out who they are. Angel instantly was like, that's Candy's parents. I can't believe they showed up. Y'all, they went to the casket looking at her. Candy came to her mama and she was talking to her mama and she was just like, um, she had her mama with her mama and she was just like, I never understood you. I just thought that you were, you know, um, being creative. And she was like, mama, I used to play in your wigs and your makeup and all that stuff all the time. You never tapped my behind. You never shooed me away. I just automatically thought that you were supporting me. And so she was like, no, I didn't know what was going on. There's no handbook on this and all this other stuff. And so, you know. They ended up kind of having a, a good moment. So I was like, okay, I'm glad she ain't try to act a fool in that moment. And so she was like, you know, you're different on the outside, but you're still my baby on, on underneath. And so she told her that she loved her. And then she ended up going, you know, appearing on the side where her daddy was standing. And so she was talking to her daddy. And her daddy was just like, um, she was, she was like, You've always been good to me. I've, I've all, you've always been sweet on me and all of that. And so she remembers her favorite Christmas, which was one year he had gotten a dollhouse that she wanted. And he, I don't know if he tried to make it seem as though it didn't come from him or oh, I don't know where it came from. You know how some people, if one spouse feels one way, you got to be on the side of the spouse, even if you don't believe it. I kind of feel like that's what might have happened. So apparently she wanted this dollhouse and like late in the middle of the nights and stuff, he would be building it or whatever. And that one Christmas, he, it was presented to her and she said that, you know, he didn't know it, but she would sneak and see him building it and all that. And she was like, you just don't know that was the best Christmas that I ever had. And so he was like, I just wanted my child to have what they wanted. And, you know, he admitted to, you know, being that type of father who was like, well, I'm going to put my child in these manly type of sports and see what happened. But he, you know, he ain't never really have a problem with it. He just didn't know how to handle it. And, you know, he didn't know, you know, what he really needed to do as far as that was concerned. Um, she said that, you know, that day when that happened, she just said that she felt good to be seen by him. And I noticed that a lot of people who are gay or in the uh, LBGT and the rest of the letters of that community, when they say they feel seen, it means that somebody notices them to the point of where they're like, okay, I see where you are. I see where you're going. I see what you are and what you want to be, you know, so I acknowledge it. Whether I agree with it or not, I acknowledge you and I'll respect it on some level. And so that's what she was saying. She said that day I felt seen by you. So I was like, that's so cool. I love it. Y'all, she said ever since that day when she felt seen by him, that gave her the courage to be fully who she knew she was supposed to be. So she ended up saying she loved him and he didn't say nothing. He turned back and looked at the casket. I was just like, oh my gosh, don't do it. I didn't cry. I did good, y'all. I did good. Um, Y'all, so... All of the MCs, meaning like Pray Tell and all the people who are the judges and all that stuff, they gathered up front. He ended up asking them to come up there and they actually presented the new category. And he was like, you know, we're going to wait until the next ball to do it. But um, the next ballroom situation to go down before we do it. But I feel like this is the best time to do it. 
and it is the category of lip syncing and they were going to call it Candy's, uh, let me make sure I want to say it right. I want to say it right. Candy's Sweet Refrain. I was like, oh, that was so cute. So anyway, Blanca ended up, you know, kind of backing him up. And, you know, you can kind of tell he was going kind of going empty and didn't know what else he had to say. And so she ended up putting the lighter out. Everybody put their lighters up for her. And then they ended up having the Paul Bears to come up there and swing the body around. And they went right into the ballroom scene. They rolled her casket in there. Y'all, I was like, okay then. Y'all, I was like, yes, do that. So, of course, they had Candy get up out the casket. She had on another dress. Her hair was done. She did what I did back in the day during that time, which was you had glitter. And you had that glitter all up and through your hair. But the wig she had on, it was long and all that. Y'all, it was everything. And she ended up lip syncing the song Never Knew Love Like This Before by Stephanie Mills. And she did an amazing job. I was like, yes, yeah, set it off. So after she did that song, she made her grand exit. I was here for y'all. So after it was all over, Blanca, her kids, and um, Lu Lulu and Pray Tell, it might have been like one or two other stray kids or whatever, as I want to say strays, you know what I mean. Other people came over and they had like a big pot of macaroni or something <laughs> that she made. And it was quiet because everybody's still in their feelings, of course. This is very fresh. Like, this is unreal to everybody. And so Lulu broke the silence and she was like, I bet Candy up in heaven right now, smiling down because... She finally got the one thing that she's always wanted. And that's for y'all to shut up. So then everybody started laughing. And then um, some of the kids went into talking about one of the other kids and how his hair looked and all this other stuff. Kind of still trying to break the ice. And y'all, I was just like, yay. Um, you could tell that Pray Tell is clearly in his feelings. So the kids went on by their business and went out to the club. Other people left and went home that didn't go to the club. And so um, Blanca and Pray Taylor are in the kitchen. She's washing dishes. And so he read her a little bit. He was like, you should have made them children clean these dishes before they went out. So she was like, no, it's all right. I want them to go out there and enjoy their lives. And I like the quiet. I like the peace and quiet. I don't mind doing this. They can go on by their business. So, you know, after that moment, Pray Tell was just talking and... <sighs> He ends up, she was like, well, that glass already clean. And so he was like, you know, I know, just fill it up. I'm, I'm feeling a little thirsty. So she gave him a little glass of water. He pulled out the thing of pills. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. Y'all got happy. I got happy like it was a real situation happening in front of me. So Pray Tell has finally decided to go on ahead and take that medication. Blanca was so excited that she joined him. And so he was like, oh, it's a party now? And she was like, no, nah, this is a um, toast. So they toasted to that. And he was just like, look, I don't want to waste my life. I don't want to sit up here. I've been reminded by Candy's death that life is too short and too precious. And I want to live my life to the fullest. I don't want to go to my casket with any regrets. So that's all that happened with this episode, y'all. I was here for it. I hope that y'all enjoyed my review. I love it so much, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm going to try my best to start cutting these down to the half the time you see right now. Because I get carried away. And this show was an hour or something anyway. So yeah, y'all. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And y'all have a good Sunday. Have a good one. Bye.